こんにちは。こんにちは。あんにょんがせよ。あんにょんがせよ。にんはお。にんはお。OK、しの、bonjour。You know, I've created a lot of video and tutorials, and at some point, I need to optimize my workflow to be more effective and streamline everything. Just like in production. And I found an example that would be really great for you to use, guys, helping you understand the rig logic in Unreal a bit more. Let's dive into an IK function setup. All right, today we've got our buddy here to help us illustrate everything. And there's the pitch. Let's say you want to create IK for your arms and your legs. The way you create that is basically the same for each of your characters every time. So you don't want to start from scratch again, right? And one more important thing, it's going to be more optimized in real time too. Why? Because we'll use functions and loops. Let's break it all down. First thing you usually do is manually create your controls, right? You can do that, totally fine. And you know what? Let's do it for the root and pelvis control to start. Adjust the shapes, etc. But did you know that you can automate this process quite quickly? Indeed, everything you put in the construction events is initialized first and can then be used across the graph in any way, including dynamically spawned controls. Let's put that in place for the creation of any two bone IK setup, meaning the dynamic creation of the end control, pole vector, and additional settings to play with. We're going to create the setup in the main graph for now, then we'll turn it into a function. Using a sequence node, we're going to organize and tell Unreal how to execute everything. That's really important to understand in Unreal. You don't just drop something like a constraint and expect it to work across your graph regardless of what comes before or after. Wrong! It's all order dependent. If you place something after a specific logic block, you might encounter issues. So make sure to check how you organize the overall execution order in your graph. And you can better visualize this through the execution stack tab, where you can double click on each execution and focus on specific nodes. So sequences nodes are not just here to make your graph look neat. They matter for the core logic of your rig. Back to our IK setup in the construction event, let's start by spawning a node, for example, to group the IK controls we create on the fly. For that, we can simply use the spawn null node. We can specify a parent, like a master control here, but I leave it at default for the moment. I just change the name to IK arm, for example, meaning we'll obviously start with them. And I'm going to switch to global space here to match workspace. Let's continue with the pole vector setup. And here, we're going to use a method you've already seen me do before, and that's the use of the for each node. Don't underestimate this node. It's a key player in optimizing your graph. In Unreal, you don't need to repeat the setup you've used for one control. You can loop everything, and Unreal will execute that logic in one go instead of multiple times. It's a very different approach compared to what we're used to do in software like Maya or Blender. So depending on the array I use to fit this node, Unreal will repeat all the logic I define right after. And in this case, the logic is to dynamically spawn a control, name it properly, apply any transform offsets, and even change its shape. So let's reference the two bones we'll use to define the pole vectors. Usually it's a mid-length bone in your chain. Here, typically, the elbow or lower arm. You can select them in the rig hierarchy and drag and drop to create an item array. Let's connect that to our for each node. Next, let's spawn our controls on the fly using a spawn control node. By default, the initial value here isn't defined, which means you can create different kinds of controls. If you right-click the initial value pin and go to the templates drop-down menu, you see all the types available. You can specify the type directly, or depending what you plug into that pin, Unreal will automatically determine the type for you. Let's select the type we want here, the transform one. Let's connect the execution pin and focus on the rest. First, we want to specify the parent, which is the null we created earlier. You can just plug the item output of the spawn null to retrieve and use its value. For the name, we can be smart here. Using a concat node, we can add any suffix or prefix depending on the original bond name. Here, let's add the prefix pv underscore to any bond used for our pole vector setup. Unfold the element output to focus on the name pin. Now, based on the element pin, we can drag out and look for the get transform node. This is important to determine where the controls will spawn. As always, based on our initial bone selection, we'll retrieve all the transform with just one node and Unreal will execute it in the array order we used. Let's plug that transform into the initial value. Let's connect everything and see the magic. And now you'll see the dynamic hierarchy all procedurally created in our construction script. Let's apply a small y-axis offset to properly place the ball vector. And here, we're good to go now. 
Let's repeat the same process and create the setup for the end controls, meaning the hands. Copy everything here, replace the array with the left and right bones, and update the concat node with the prefix ik underscore, for instance. Don't forget to use the spawn null as the parent. It's starting to look a bit spaghetti-ish, but we'll clean that up later by turning this into a function. Let's connect everything and voila! Our ik end controls are in place. We can for example modify the shapes under the settings pin here. Let's for example pick the box fix shape. And you can of course adjust more things as needed. The entire construction event is now built, our dynamic consoles are in place and correctly spawned. We can now quickly jump in the forward solve to actually create the logic that will drive our bones via these controls. After that, we'll come back to organize things a bit more through a function. First, since we've already created the root and pelvis control, we can set them up quickly using an fk solve with the function I like to use the fkchains node. Here you can simply select and drag and drop both the bones and controls as an item array. In just a few seconds, you have the whole setup working. Easy, right? Now thanks to an already existing function, the ik2bone, we can use that to set up our ik arm system. Let's define the pole vector, the bones, and the end controls with the corresponding items. Adjust the axis and connect the node to an initial sequence node. And that's it, our IK setup is now in place. Alright, that covers everything we need to establish the core logic. Now the goal is to turn our IK creation control into a function, to automate and streamline the part that took the longest, creating and adjusting the IK controls. You can select the entire construction setup, right-click and choose Collapse to Function. The key here is to expose all the input values we used initially and make them accessible from the function. It's easy. You can just drag and drop the values you want to expose into the entry node. Let's do that. Start by exposing the name input from the null. Label it something like IK group parents. Then expose the pole vector array, the prefix name, and the offset. You get the ID, right? I do the same for the IK end controls. To better organize the null parents, you can also create a local variable from the item outputs of the spawn null control and reuse that across your spawn control nodes. And there's a tip to avoid that spaghetti wiring. You can bind function output values directly to that target, no wires needed. If you unplug the parent input, for example, then right-click. Under variables, you'll be able to bind it to an existing output from the function. It's super useful and a great way to clean up your graph. Don't forget to add the end node of your function in a new sequence pin here. Now back in the main graph, we can use this function twice, once for the arms and once for the legs, for example. Everything is now neatly packed, easily reusable and well optimized. And not just visually, but performance-wise too, perfect for real-time applications. You can even reuse this function across different control rig. Just set the function to public. You can also assign a category and add description notes and it will be available across your entire project. The key takeaway here is understanding how to procedurally and dynamically create controls and logic without having to manually build everything. This is a fundamental concept in Unreal, just like the importance of for each logic and functions. And that's it for today guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and don't hesitate to leave some comments if you want me to talk about specific subjects. I'm looking into the comments even if sometimes it takes me a lot of time to answer. See you next week for a new one, ciao!